I'm sure that many of you, if not all of you, have heard of skiing before, and maybe even a few of you have tried it in the winter. Skiing is a popular wintertime sport, and without the laws of physics, it wouldn't be possible to do. In this video, I'll explain the basics of physics and skiing. To begin with, skiing has been around for quite some time. A long time. It started around 600 BC in China, and it was used as a utility to travel and transport goods through the mountains and snow. In my case, I've been skiing for almost all of my life, and I enjoy the sport very much. First off, Newton's three laws come into play for skiing. Newton's first law. This law states that an object in motion will stay in motion, and an object at rest will stay at rest until acted upon by an outside force. This is what makes it possible for a skier to go down a hill without stopping. Gravity is what causes the skier to continue going down the hill, unless they encounter friction such as softer snow. Newton's second law. This law states that force equals mass times acceleration, or F equals MA. Using this, we can calculate how much force we have and how fast we are going down the hill by taking our mass times our acceleration. Newton's third law. This law states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. It is because of this when we push off the ground with our poles we go forward. In a sense, the ground is actually pushing back. To apply these above principles to physics is very simple. When you are at the bottom of a hill, you have a low amount of potential energy. But as you take a chairlift to the top of the hill, your elevation is higher and so is your potential energy. Kinetic energy also increases as you are pulled down the slope by the force of gravity. Once you are at the bottom of the hill, you would have a height of 0 meters making your potential energy 0. At this point, the skier's speed and kinetic energy have reached a maximum. Back to Newton's third law, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, we can use this in consideration when there is the possibility of running into a tree. We should remember that while we are running into the tree with a lot of force due to our acceleration and our mass, the tree will respond with an equal and opposite force bringing us to a very sudden and unpleasant stop. Since this is not the best way to stop, skiers will slide sideways to dig their edges into the snow to slow down and finally come to rest. Normally, when you are trying to gain speed or accelerate while skiing, you should point your skis downhill along the line of least resistance. Friction is something that is very important in skiing in both slowing down and stopping. Ultimately, it comes down to making the force of friction equal the force that was propelling us down the hill. We can calculate this force of friction in a relatively simple manner. Different surfaces have a constant that is known as the coefficient of friction and is the Greek letter mu. We use this to calculate the force of friction on that particular surface. The force of friction F of F is equal to mu times the normal force. F of N, or the normal force, is equal to the force perpendicular to the direction of travel. Consequently, it allows us to have a lot more control when sliding down the slope. Many ski racers will use wax on the underside of their skis in order to reduce the friction and subsequently ski faster. One of the best parts of skiing is the speed and acceleration that occurs at the beginning of runs and while going down steeper sections of the hill. Without it, we would never move from our resting position and would not have much fun at all. The equation that we can use to determine our acceleration is simply the quantity of our final velocity minus our original velocity divided by time. Finally, I have a free body diagram as an example that shows the simple force of friction that will occur while skiing. Though the friction from the snow is one factor, skiers also experience drag from the air as well. To reduce their drag and ski faster, a lot of competitive skiers wear tight clothing, which are GS suits, and teardrop shaped helmets to increase their aerodynamics. I hope that you enjoyed this brief explanation of how physics relates to skiing and I hope that you too can have fun on the slopes as well. 